Hello and welcome to the first lecture of Math 2R03. Now, you hopefully at this point you've actually watched lecture zero, which will kind of explain the mechanics of the course and kind of the grading scheme. Lecture one is our first lecture where we get into the mathematical content of the course. And today's lecture is based upon section 1.A of the textbook, where we just uh, kind of basically review some of the properties of the real numbers and the complex numbers. So many of these things you probably have seen already in Math 1B03, or maybe one of your other courses. So that's kind of the goal of today's class uh, lecture. Uh, today's lecture should be a little bit shorter than the usual ones, uh, but I hope you find that this is a good refresher of some of the basic uh, results of R, the real numbers and the complex numbers. Okay, so I'll make myself disappear here. So in the title here, we have R and C, and just remember what R stands for. R stands for all real numbers. And C stands for all complex numbers. Okay, so just kind of a quick reminder about what a comp where complex numbers come from. Well, we have this particular polynomial, x squared equals negative one. And we have to remember, and this is something you use in calculus, is that this polynomial has no real roots. Okay, there's no real number that satisfies this because any real number, when you square it, gives you a positive number, but on the right-hand side, it has a negative number. And so what we do is we introduce a new number, i, Okay, and we say, well, let i be the solution to this equation. Right, so i is the number with the property that i squared is equal to negative 1. And so the complex numbers, one way to think about it is it's all numbers of the form a plus b i, right? So here I can write it a little bit more uh, concisely in terms of set no notation, a plus b i, where a and b are allowed to be any real numbers. Okay, so some a, an example of a complex number would be something like two plus three i, or I could have three minus pi i, I could have two, uh, 2 pi just by itself, that's also a complex number. That's the case where b is equal to 0. Or I could have something like minus 17i. So that's a, another example of a complex number. Okay. So you know from your high school days and maybe calculus that there's all sorts of properties that you can do. There's all sorts of uh, arithmetic properties you can do for the real numbers. And you can do the same thing for the complex numbers. And again, this is probably review. Uh, you can take two complex numbers, a plus bi plus c plus di, and the sum of those two numbers is a plus c. That becomes the real part, and the imaginary part is b plus di. The subtraction works in the same way. We group together the real part, and then we subtract, a part, subtract the imaginary part. Multiplication. It's a little bit more involved. There is a formula, but just let me show you how the formula comes about. So we have our two complex numbers, and we expand them out kind of the normal way we'd expand out two binomials. Okay, using you may know this under the rule of FOIL. And so we have AC plus ADI plus BCI plus BDI squared. Now remember, i squared is, uh, has, the, has the property that's equal to negative 1. Right? So we can rewrite this as ac ad plus bci minus bd. So we can regroup everything together. So we get ac minus bd plus ad plus bci. And we can also divide two complex numbers, and here's how one would go about it. You have a plus bi, and we want to divide it by c plus di. Well, the way that we're going to handle this is we're going to take this number here, and we'll multiply it on the top and the bottom by c minus di, c minus di. And the reason that we do that is at the bottom, when you multiply this out, using the rules Above, you get c squared plus d squared downstairs. And upstairs, you would get ac 
plus BD, that's the real part, and the imaginary part is going to be BC minus ADEI over C squared plus D squared. Okay, so again, this is probably a review, and that's why I'm going over it quickly. Um, so it's just good to have, know that these properties hold. We don't use them too much in the course, but it's good to know what these definitions are. And in this course, we're going to write F if a property holds for both R and C. So what happens in linear algebra is there are some results that will depend upon whether we're looking at whether our, our numbers are coming from R or coming from C. But there are actually many results where it doesn't actually matter whether we're taking our numbers from the real numbers or the complex numbers. And so in that case, we just normally write F. And you may hear me call F a field. Okay, and I'll talk a little bit about a field at the end of today's uh, lecture. Now, there's a whole bunch of properties uh, the, of the field F. So here I'm using F to mean either the real numbers or the complex numbers. So pick which one you want to work with and then say, take three numbers, alpha, beta, gamma, inside of your, your uh, set F. And then what sort of properties do you have? Okay, well, addition commutes. Okay, so the order, the order in which you add two elements doesn't matter. So here, I'll just put this right here. So this says that addition commutes. One of the other properties has that is that the pro uh, addition is associative. So when you have three things and you add them together, it doesn't matter in which order you add them. So we have the associative property. Uh, we have the property that there's an element zero inside of F that has the property that a plus zero, zero alpha plus zero is alpha. And also for all alpha in our, our set F, there's a beta such that alpha plus beta equals zero. So there's always, given any element alpha, we can add something to it to get to zero. So these kind of tell us about the addition properties inside of F. And now let's talk about some of the multiplication. The multiplication properties of the real numbers and the complex numbers has that multiplication commutes. Multiplication commutes. Multiplication is also distributive. Uh, there's an element one inside of F such that if you multiply one by anything, you get the element back. And then for all alpha in F, uh, alpha not equal to zero, there's a beta in F such that alpha times beta is equal to one. So given any element inside of the real numbers or complex numbers, we can find some element beta that allows us to multiply to one. Okay, so it's called the inverse. And in fact, I have that written right here, is where you, we're gonna use minus uh, alpha denotes the beta such that um, alpha plus negative alpha equals zero. So when I mean negative alpha, I mean this beta that allows me to answer this equation. And I use one over alpha to denote the beta such that alpha times one over alpha equals zero. Okay, so we'll take a quick pause here and then in, uh, we'll continue our kind of review of the real numbers and the complex numbers in the second part of our video.